Hey guys, my name is Paul from Nomadic Kitesurf. Over the next few months, we're gonna make a few short instructional movies on the different parts of learning to kitesurf. Today, we're gonna to start from the very start and we're gonna learn how to set up a kitesurfing kite. Okay guys, so we've got the kite laid out with one wing tip into the wind so it's not going anywhere. What we're now going to do is work out the different parts of the kite before we go ahead and set it up. So first of all, at the both ends, we've got the wing tips. Along the front of the kite, we've got the leading edge. Along the leading edge as well, you've got the bridles and the bridles attached to the flying lines. Along the back of the kite, we've got the trailing edge. The canopy is the main material on the kite. Just think of parachute, paragliders, canopy. Okay, between the leading edge and the trailing edge, so between the front and the back of the kite, we've got these tubes and these are called the struts. Now you'll notice on this kite, the struts and the leading edge are linked between some hoses and it's called a one pump system. So basically when you put air in the leading edge, the struts go up automatically. Other types of kites, you have to pump up the struts and the leading edge separately. All right. In terms of repairing kites, it's much easier if it's not one pump, but to get you guys out on the water nice and quickly, I'd definitely go for the one pump if you can afford it, because it's a little bit more expensive. Okay guys, so when you're pumping up the kite, first of all, on the pump, you've got your inflate and your deflate. So we need to make sure, obviously, we always have it on our inflate nozzle. We've got two valves on the kite. We've got our large deflate one, which we must secure first of all. I always say lick the, the valve first before we put it in. It's not an airbed, so it's important not to push the valves into the kite itself. Once we close the deflate, we pump up via the smaller inflate valve. Two feet on the pump. We connect our pump leash to the kite to stop it blowing away. And then we pump up until the kite's nice and firm. Kite surf pumps do have pressure gauges on them, but in my experience, they tend to break quite quickly. We need to make sure it's quite hard, although it should still have a bit of give to the kite if you try and bend it. If you tap the kite with your fingernails on along the leading edge, it's to sound like a drum. Most people underinflate their kite because they're worried about damaging it, but actually an underinflated kite is an unhappy kite. So make sure the kite's nice and hard for it to perform properly. Of course, if you're overseas, somewhere like Australia, where it's nice and hot, the air expands as it gets hotter, it may be worth letting a bit of air out of your leading edge. You wouldn't want to leave it flagging on the beach all day. But in the UK, it's not normally a problem, is it? So remember guys, this kite is a very expensive bit of kit and um, it's really important that we don't drag it up and down the sharp stones on the beach. So when you're carrying a kite, always think of the smiley face position and always carry it upside down, holding the leading edge. And as you can see, you can walk with it and it kind of flies itself. Now, rigging the kite up, so connecting the bar and lines, we need to make sure we put the kite leading edge down with the center strut into the wind and we always secure it. There is a shower on the beach, a nice heavy, um, big scaffolding tube type shower, which is concreted into the ground. Now, if somebody didn't secure their kite well enough last year, the kite took off, it wrapped itself around the shower and the whole thing ripped up the ground. So it's super, super important with all the kids and things on the site that our kite doesn't blow away. Okay guys, so we're gonna learn how to lay the lines out next. So we've got four lines on this kite bar. We leave the lines at the kite end and we walk downwind from the kite, taking four lines off the bar at a time. Okay guys, so down at the bar end, we've got our outside lines, which are the steering lines, and we've got our inside lines or front lines, which are our power lines. And now we're down at this end, we just need to just um, untangle the lines so the right line goes to the right part of the kite. To do that, all I do is stand in between the lines and just walk along and back to the kite. 
As I'm doing this, I'm checking for twists and I'm also checking for any knots or damage to the lines. So now we've laid the lines out nice and clearly, the next thing to do is attach them to the kite. Now the lines attach via the bridles and we always start with the middle line first and you can see quite cleverly Airrush have marked the bridles with middle and middle. So you've got two matching, you've also got colour coding as well. Now the knot we use is very simple, even if you're terrible at knots um, you'll be happy because it's quite a simple knot. We literally just push the middle bit through like that and that goes over the top of the knot and pulls tight. It's called a lark's head knot or lark's foot um, if you're a climber. So we fasten that one there. One note as well when you're connecting the bridles it's very easy sometimes to get the bridles twisted round so I'll just show you what I mean on this one here. So in a rush I've seen people before grab the bridle they won't notice perhaps that this end has been twisted through here and they'll try and connect the two lines together, not seeing that, they'll launch the kite and they'll get themselves into difficulties. So it's always important you make sure all the bridles are clear and not tangled before you connect them. And I'll just show that knot once more. So it's in through here and that goes over the top of the knot and make sure that's nice and tight against the end. So once we've connected the centre lines, we move to the outside lines. And again, you'll notice air rush have been quite nice. You've got right and right, so you can't really get the two mixed up. It also even says attach kite line here, so it tells you which knot to attach it to. Now the further towards the centre of the bridle you attach uh, the kite line to, the more power from the kite. If you attach it further to the outside, the less power. But this is a factory standard setting, hence the one knot there to begin with. So just as before, we make the same lark said knot. We'll put that over the top of the outside line there. Okay guys, now that we've set up our kite, we're going to do one final thing and that's a pre-flight check and this should always be done before we ask something to launch our kite. Pre-flight check involves checking underneath the kite, making sure all these bridles here are not twisted. For example, um, I've heard stories in the past that somebody launching their kite, a bridle's been twisted without them knowing and they've got dragged down the beach because they've just got no control. So we're making sure it's nice and clean through there, there's no twists, checking the knots we've done are nice and tight. We're also going to check over the kite canopy itself, make sure there's no obvious damage. If we have a small nick in there and we don't spot that and we slam the kite hard into the water, it could result in a much bigger damage to the kite. We're also going to check our lines and we're going to check finally that there's no twists and no knots in the flying lines. So we're just going to literally pick up all four lines and just walk back to the bar. Okay guys, so now that we've learned how to set up the kite, we're going to look at the different parts of the bar and how the safety system works as well. So first of all, on the bar we've got the steering lines, otherwise known as the outside lines. We've got the centre lines, otherwise known as the power lines. Okay, and they run all the way through the middle of the bar. We've got our D-power and power straps that we can use to fine tune. And we've got our bar floats to stop the kite bar from sinking. And also it's necessary sometimes to grab hold of an outside line to relaunch the kite. You can grab hold of the bar float here, or you can grab hold of what's known as a leader line where it's a bit thicker, where it protects your hands. You've got your quick release system here, and you've got your chicken loop and your chicken finger. And I'm now going to show you how all that works. So when we're ready to, give, uh, to fly the kite, we first of all, take our kite leash that we always are wearing on the harness, we clip it onto the centre ring there, chicken loop goes into our spreader bar, this is our spreader bar here, chicken finger goes underneath that locks it in place. So that's us connected to our kite. We'll grab the bar, making sure red's always in our left hand. Steering is just as we steer the power kite but now we've got the added element of being able to power the kite up by pulling the bar in, push the bar out, depower the kite. So if it all goes wrong, we're always going to let go of the bar first of all, and that will give us 100% depower. If it's still pulling us and we're feeling scared, whatever reason, the kite's still pulling us through a harness, we've let go of our bar, we now need to try and release ourselves from this. And you can see 
got arrows on the quick release. We push the quick release away from us and that comes out. We're left on one line. The bar shoots up along the lines. The kite closes and fully depowers. We're left with one line. It's called flagging out the kite. All you should need to do in an emergency, if it's still pulling you towards something dangerous, be it other people, something hard like the beach, or if it's really gone wrong and it's pulling us towards the ferries and the shipping channel, it's only a kite we need to release it all together. To do that, one or two hands on our kite leash quick release, push that away from us and we've lost the kite. But please remember that it's an emergency release. If you do that, you've lost your kite and it's a danger then to other people.